Morning, Greg. Morning. Today, we're Today. talking about three English-British phrases that baffle the rest of the world. And we're going to do some farts, or a fart. You've probably got a joke. And there's a classic game review. So now we've gone global, Greg. We get lots of comments from people all over the world, don't we? I didn't know how I was in America, did you? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and um, a lot of those comments are about the things that we say, as British people. Some people around the world don't understand some of the things we say. I don't understand half the things you say, <laughs> But before we go on, I would just like to say that we do really appreciate all of the comments from all of our new subscribers and the people who've been with us since the beginning. I don't always get time to reply to all of them, but I do try and reply to some, but we do appreciate all of them, don't we? We don't get time to reply. You've got all the time in the world, Greg, haven't you? How dare you. Judge Judy. Anyway, we're talking about phrases that baffle the rest of the world. Oh, is there another episode on Yeah, soon? it's on soon. Can we go right, on with it? Yeah. Well, the first one, Greg, that has come up a lot in our comments is Bob's your uncle. Which is amazing because I've never had an uncle called Bob. Nor me. But many of us use the phrase, Bob's your uncle. What does it mean, Greg? It means, um, doesn't it? It means something that happens when you put ingredients together. So, like, if you put apples in a pastry crust and you want a apple pie, Bob's your uncle, there's your apple pie. It's not just ingredients, though, is it? Well, no, it's, you it's, do it's anything. to do with life, yeah. You know, you put this wood on top of these legs here and... Bob's, Bob's your, your uncle, uncle, you've got, got a, a table. table. Yeah? Yeah? I like this. It's good, yeah. isn't it? Bob's your uncle. Sometimes we say it in different ways as well, don't we? Like, what, like Bob's your uncle? No, like Robert's your uncle's brother. Is that right? No. I've never heard that Robert's, in my life. Robert's your brother's something. Sometimes we say it like that. But we just say Bob's your uncle. Now, Vodka again. there are lots of conflicting reasons about how Bob's your uncle came about and nobody's really sure why it came about. I, I, to be honest, I don't think anyone cares. I'm going to tell you though. Great. The uh, One of the theories is that uh, the 20th Brit British Prime Minister, you try saying that Greg, the 20th British Prime Minister um, was called Robert Arthur Talbot Gascoigne Cecil, the third Marquess of Salisbury. I'd love to have been in the, uh, the school for <laughs> registry. <laughs> uh, we'll just call him Robert. Uh, yeah. Bob's your uncle is often said to have derived from the uh, from that man there, uh, <laughs> Lord Salisbury, who appointed his favourite nephew Arthur Balfour to several political posts in the 1880s. Balfour went on to become Prime Minister after his uncle, but his early political appointments were considered inappropriate uh, as he had shown no prior interest in public work. It's unlikely that Arthur Balfour would ever have become a celebrated politician without his uncle Robert. So. So, he wouldn't have become a politician without his uncle Robert. So Bob's your uncle, you're a politician. That's the best I can come up with, Greg, as well. That's where that came it? from. Yes, but it's on the interweb, so it must be true. Bob's your uncle. That's Bob's your uncle. <laughs> what a cock up. I beg your pardon. That's another phrase, isn't it? Yes, but that might be quite rude to some people around the world, Greg. You can't just blurt it out like that. Well, it's not rude to us, is it? No, it's not. Tell me a cock-up, Greg, is when something goes horrendously wrong, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> a bit like this show. So, if we are in our day-to-day -day working practices, we mess something up, Greg, sometimes you will say, what a cock-up. Oh, you made a right cock-up of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's no There's nothing rude about it. Nothing. Um, and again, there are some ambiguities about where the phrase came from. What? What? Some ambiguities about where the phrase came from. Yeah, I heard you. I just know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, in actual fact, this one, Greg, yeah. may have originated from an American. Uh, Henry Herbert was a novelist, sometimes wrote under the name Frank Forrester. He was an American novelist. And he produced a novel called The Warwick Woodlands in 1851 that contains the phrase cock up. Mm. And it says, you'll find a blind track there, right through the brush, keep your eyes skinned, do. There'll be a cock up before you're ten yards in. <laughs> what? <laughs> 
meaning that somebody might think that there's a bird flying up when there isn't. So that is kind of where the phrase cock up may have come from. Probably didn't, but it may have. Cock up. What's the matter? I have got the right ump with you. <laughs> That's a good one, Jace. Uh, yeah, yeah, tell me, Jace. I've got the ump, or the hump. Um, is a saying that we use, isn't it, when we're cross with someone or annoyed? Yeah, why? I've got the hump. Um, do you want me to tell you why? Go would on. Would you like me to tell you why? I would like you, yeah. <laughs> Go on. Well, again, people uh, come up with different meanings and origins for this phrase, but uh, some of them are to do with camels, but that is believed to not be correct. The correct origin for this phrase is supposedly to do with Punch and Judy. The original Punch puppets had a hump on his back. Right. And because Punch is always hang hangry, Punch is always angry, uh, that's where the phrase supposedly came from. I've got the hump with you. Mr Punch's got the hump with you. I've got the right hump with you, Greg. We'll be back another week with more British phrases that baffle the rest of the world. <laughs> Classic game review, Greg. Now, if I were to show you this, what would you think, Greg? Uh, drink? No, game related. Well, uh, I wouldn't. Why not? I don't know what you're going to bet. Well, 7up was the inspiration for this little guy. Cool spot, Greg. I don't remember, remember this game at all. What is wrong with you? Nothing, I just don't remember it. The whole world played this game. Cool Spot, being the Spot from the 7up logo, became a little character all of his own. They made a character out of the Spot? Yes. Well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's not. It's a great game. Yeah, but that's ridiculous. It's a platform game, Greg, and uh, it was released in... I'll just have a look on my <laughs> screen. 1993, um, and it was developed by Virgin Games and was released on many platforms. This particular one is the Sega Master System. Uh, it was a platform game where you went along, uh, he could fire soda bubbles at enemies that came along. He could jump um, and he could cling and climb things. Do you want me to read you the thing on the yeah, back? Yeah, why not? It says, no way. Your cool spot chums are locked away. Yes way. You, as cool spot, are here to save the day. Are you struggling, Greg? It's not really, you know, it's not really pulling my attention into it, is it? It's a good game. Yeah, but I mean, that's a, that's a terrible write-up, isn't it? Yes. There's one other bit it says here. Quick gawping over dreamy scenery, the awesome animation and most savoury sound around. Play man, this is the hairiest. Does that make any sense to you whatsoever? Now you read that and you try and sound better than I do. No way. Your cool spot chums are locked away. Yes way. You, as cool spot, are here to save the day. Quit gawping over the dreamy scenery, the awesome animation and most savoury sound around. Play man, this is the hairiest. Well that sounds fantastic. <laughs> That's just brilliant. Basically, you go around, uh, you've got to collect loads of spots and there's bonus levels and stuff like that. You've got to rescue all your mates. You can fire soda bubbles at your enemies, jump, cling, climb. You're 40 years old, Jason. Yeah. Have you heard yourself? Yeah. This is a brilliant game. I'm going to show you a clip of it, Greg. Show me it now. I'm going to. Not again. Again, yeah. Wow. I think you need to talk to doctors about this, Jason. Probably. Jason. Yes, Greg? I split up with my girlfriend after going rock climbing with her. Really? Yeah. Too clingy. Time for a commercial break. Have you met my budgie, Dobbin? Say hello, Dobbin. Good boy! I know what he's after. One of my Smith Square crisps. Well, they're not really crisps. They're more of a crunch than a crisp. Here you are then, Dobbin. Actually, Dobbin isn't really a budgie. Are you, Dobbin? Smith Square crisps. The crisp that isn't a crisp. Look on your yogurt, brother. 
see what it's really got. It's preservative. That's a word you won't find on ski. Ski does it naturally. Look at him ski. It's so full of freshness. Look at him ski. Full of fruit, full of goodness. Look at him ski. It's so nutritious. Ski. It's delicious. For you and your family. Look at him ski. I must say, I haven't farted for a while. I mean, you we haven't farted in the. I was going to say you have. Uh, you have. You have. I haven't. Uh, this, you mean, Greg? Yeah. Fantastically funny, phenomenal fart. Yeah. I believe you've chosen one for us this week. Already. I have. Yeah. This is the best one. My mum will love this one. It's called the Bingo Pro. It's funny fart. because one of the other ones you said was like your mum. She's going to love this. Yeah. It's not looking good, is it? No. The Bingo Pro fart. Read about it, Jason. The bingo parlour is her temple, and she's as focused as a monk in prayer. If only that smell was just incense. She has a system, her lucky card dobbers, her lucky socks, her lucky breeches, and there she sits happily tooting, tooting with every matching number. Beware, when she wins, she doesn't just shout bingo. <laughs> uh, age like of it. onset, early 70s, how to identify, steely concentration, lucky clover scented farts. Like it. Here we go then. Ladies and gentlemen, this is ladies old gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. This is old people. Well, the book says old people. Uh, and this is the bingo fart. <laughs> See, I think at the end, this is how it should have gone. This is If I wrote this book and did this, this is how I'd do it. House. That's what I'd do. <laughs> so, so, we have mentioned that retro collectors might be on the way back soon. Greg. It is, it is, it is. Uh, I spoke to the production company. I'll let you into a little secret. I went to the car boot last weekend. When? Without you. Why? Because you were away. Oh. Uh, it was the first car boot of the season. Yeah. It picked a little something up. Is a little sneak preview of the kind of things that we find out about on the car boot. I'm quite excited now. Go on then, go on go? then. Here we go. It's a talk boy. You never found that at a car boot? Well, I say I found it. Somebody at the car boot said, I've got something for you. It was Russ. He said, uh, Russ, oh, you know. You know Russ, everyone. Uh, and he said, I've got something for you. Here it is. And he pulled this out. What, and that? Yeah. <laughs> Mate, that is the most amazing car boot find it's ever. It's only a talk boy, isn't it? From Home Alone 2. Home Alone talk boy. This is Kevin McAllister, the father. The only thing is, I can't... It works, but you can't actually slow it down like he does in the film. You know, he books his hotel room with it. He puts it next to the phone and he slows the voice down, pretends it's his dad. You can't actually do that. But, nevertheless, this is still brilliant. Built-in, retractable microphone, earphone jack, Record button, play button, rewind button, forward button, stop button, on off switch. Well, that's it really. So it's a tape player, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's a tape recorder. It's very good though, Greg. But that, it's not so much that, it's that. You've got the box. It's amazing. Cassette so, player recorder, Home Alone 2. What we should do is we should try and reserve a hotel room with this one day and see if not, it actually works. Why, why would you want to do that? So that's what it does in the film. 1992. I know. That's just frightening. I mean, I remember going to school. That's 20, 20... It's a long time two, ago. Two years. So, yeah, this was, when I was at school, ago. it was uh, the Christmas, you, you were allowed to go to the cinema at Christmas, and that was the film we watched. So that was my first year in senior school. 92? 1992. 12 I was, Jason. 12. Anyway. You, were, you were 23. That's my talk boy, Greg. My talk boy. What? You weren't there. Well, he's our talk boy, isn't it? And that's wonderful to go with the rest of our stuff. Um, so, yeah, Retro Collectors. More I can't believe come. you found that. It's funny, because when I go with you, we find nothing together. I know. And then you find that when you go on your own. Never say goodbye. You, me, my... It's time to say goodbye, Greg. Because that's the end of the episode. Already? Yeah, I know. That was packed, wasn't it? It was packed. Packed. Jam packed. Jam packed. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with us, send an email about anything at all to this address here, tnt at totgu.com. 
Not again, Greg. Not this week. You not want me in the show this week, Jason. Put it down, Greg. I'm not Greg, I'm I'm Michael Jack. What? We don't even need that one. Yes, but it's good, isn't it? We'll see you again on Wednesday for TNT Extra. Hope you've enjoyed today's show. Tra. Tra.